Hey guys, what's up? And welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to be continuing our Aperture Carbon Star 150 series, specifically how I fixed it. But before we get into that, if you've missed my prior videos because this is the fifth video in the series, I'll put that link in the description so you can watch the playlist in case you're interested in this scope. Alrighty, so what did we fix on the Aperture Carbon Star? Well, if you've watched my other videos, you'll know that the back cap failed on this scope, which was a major selling point by Apertura because its primary function is to block out stray light, all right? Which is a big pain point for a lot of Newtonian owners. So to have a major part like that kind of fail, well, it was a little frustrating to me. You guys, had a lot of great suggestions though. There was the black shower cap method. Uh, there was also just taping it to the back, but let me tell you, I'm the kind of guy that if I'm going to spend a thousand dollars on my scope, I want to make sure that it kind of works the way it was intended to. So I was a little disappointed in it. I took it upon myself to actually make a part that would work, and I think we're going to test that out tonight, hopefully, if the weather holds. It's been pretty unstable lately, but I think we have three hours tonight. But at 39 degrees, almost exactly, this back cap will just not fit on the back of the Newtonian. And the colder it gets, the worse the fit gets as well. So I made a part, and as you know, I'm also a 3D printing hobbyist as well. I make parts for some of my other hobbies. But I replicated this piece at first, and let me show you that one. I didn't do too bad of a job, right? I mean, it it looks pretty good. The only problem with this is I would just have the same problem. And I thought that I could just make this piece a little bit larger, which was totally not the case. I needed something that would expand and contract with the temperature because the metal on here expands and contracts. Also the back cap, the factory back cap, does the same thing. It ex expands and contracts with the temperature. So I needed something that could also do that on the fly. I don't want to carry around two caps because I could have solved it by just making a bigger cap, but I'd have to carry around two caps just in case. and. I really don't want to do that. So I thought to myself, hey, this is a really good candidate for using flexible filament. And I used TPU, and I came up with this prototype. It's a little bit bigger than the factory one as far as a lip is concerned, but it will expand and also contract with the scope, and it won't fall out. Now, I did build in a fail safe just in case it got too cold and this is what this looks like it's got a double ledge on it one for inside where the primary mirror holder is and one for the outside that well this one the original one was designed with so it sandwiches uh, that metal piece or the primary mirror, mirror holder in place so it never falls out, which is awesome. And in this final model here, I made a center cap piece that also you can remove. And you're probably asking yourself, why would you need a center cap, right? Why would you remove that in the first place? Well, I've been using the Hotec SEA lasers and if you want to learn more about these devices, guys, I really don't think this series would have been possible without these two lasers. I made a supplementary video to this, which is releasing the same day as this video, so you can check this out in case you want to learn more about Hotec and also how these guys work. I also did a defocus star test in that one, so you guys might be interested in the results I've been getting just with this laser. All right. So when you're collimating your scope, you have to align the laser in the center of the primary mirror. 
Now on the primary mirror is a small circle. And let me put a little bit of light there so you might be able to see it. And in that small circle, you wanna make sure you have the dot inside of that small circle so you can do final collimation on the rear of the scope. The SCA2, which has a crosshair feature, I can visually see the crosshair to see how centered that is. I really love the SCA2 because of that. And then when I'm done with that, I just put this back cap or the secondary back cap on and move on with my night. I think it's a really cool feature actually. And we're gonna test this out tonight. It's gonna to be pretty cold. It's gonna be in the lower 20s tonight. I think we only have about three hours though before the clouds move in and plus it's been pretty dewy, honestly. But I'm just gonna continue my project on NGC 1333. And if you've seen my Astro Adventuring video, and I'll put that link in the description too, just in case you like story videos, uh, I released that a few weeks ago and you might enjoy that. So if you're interested in that, please go ahead and watch that. And I'm hoping to get an additional three hours of data on that tonight. But before we do, let's test this back cap to make sure that it works. Its primary feature is to block out stray light. So we're gonna test this in the same way Apertura did in their video. So let me grab one of my video lights and we'll do that. It's like a freaking lightsaber, right? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna turn this to white. So we're gonna do the same conditions here. All right, here it is in white. And I'm just gonna run this on the rear of the scope. So we're gonna see if we get any light leaks, which we're not. Looks like this back cap works. Unlike my video light. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, all we got to do is wait till nightfall so we can test this and let's get on out there. Just make sure these screws are backed off so it just kind of hangs out in there. And when I do, I don't know if you can see this white dot, but I align this white dot to this screw over here. And, uh, tells me I'm pointed back towards the rear because this white dot where it's centered is right in the middle of that rectangle. All right. Now I'm going to tighten it up. All right. It doesn't have to be super tight, but just until this ring stops and then I'm going to turn my laser on. All right, so here's my cap. As you can see, it hasn't fallen out yet. Uh, but see this middle piece? I can take it out and I can quickly verify that it's in the middle, which it's not. It's actually, it's off just by a little bit. Uh, so I'm gonna keep adjusting it real quick. That's a lot more centered. I don't know if you can see it, but it is, that is nearly dead center. And that's why I have this hole here, because I don't want to remove this if I don't have to. And I just plug it back up. And then I continue my final collimation. And as you can see, it's nearly there. All right, moment of truth. About to get my first sub back. I was up in imaging by 6.05, so not too bad. Seeing could be a little bit better, but I'm not gonna complain considering the weather we've had. Nice, and it is 36 degrees right now, so we're past that 39 degree mark. And let's check if our back cap is still on it. So, let's see. Ooh, it's still hanging on, right on. Well, we just completed our first hour. It's come down to 32 degrees right now. So we're gonna check and see if the back cap's still on there. If it is, 
Good for me, right? <laughs> All right, let's check it out. Oh yeah, look at that. Still on there. Hell yeah. But, look, it's getting pretty dewy out there. Oh my gosh. It is looking super soup-tastic right now. We're getting swallowed up by dew, and I'm still imaging because I'm still getting signal in that area. Uh, looks like it's, I mean, I might be imagining things. Maybe I'm a little bit hopeful. <laughs> it looks like it's clearing up, you know, how it sometimes gets dewy and then it clears up and then it gets dewy again and then it clears up. I think it's just because the temperature is coming down initially, or at least I hope so. But, I mean, check it out. Look at all that fog down there. <laughs> this cray. I'm just hoping that I can get three hours on this at least. At the very least. Since we're waiting for all this fog to clear out, a couple things. So, the back cap is working really well. It just went out and checked on it. Still, it's still on. So... That's great. Also, what I've been noticing as well is as the temperature's dropping, it's about 29 degrees right now. Collimation hasn't changed either. So, that's really great, actually. I would have thought that temperature changes would have affected collimation in some way, especially since that metal, it does shrink quite a bit, as we've seen with the back cap just falling off. But Carbon Star is rocking it right now. I mean, I am really surprised. So, despite the back cap falling off, it is doing really well in the cold. That's something that I was not expecting. Check it out. It totally cleared up. Look at that. It's beautiful. <laughs> Ooh, that's just the break we needed. All right, it's on. So I'm going to try and stay out as long as possible. <laughs> yeah. We officially got swallowed up, guys. <laughs> so it's time to pack it in. I'm taking my flats. But it wasn't without getting about three hours of data. So I get to add that to what I already have on NGC 1333. So it's about six hours. I can't wait to see what that's going to look like. <laughs> so, well... I guess this is good night. Oh wait, let's check if the back cap's still on there, right? Wait, hold on. Is it? I don't see it on the ground. Let's see here. Oh yeah. I think we fixed it. All right. Well, I think we were pretty successful in a number of ways. First, I got my three hours of exposure time on NGC 1333. I'm working my way up to 20 hours on that. I'm really excited to see it at 20 hours. It might just take me a little bit of time to do. But we also confidently, I think, solved the back cap issue on the Carbon Star 150. The lowest temperature that it got to was 25 degrees and I'm pretty sure it could have gone a lot lower on that. So I think we were really, really successful on that. And before I get into how you can get this piece, there's a couple things about it, because I want to make this available for you guys. I think everyone should have this part, especially if you've been experiencing problems like I have. Uh, the installation process on this is a little bit quirky. It fits super snug. So what you're going to need to do is fold it up like a taco. And you're going to put the one side in first, the other side in, and you're just going to pop it in. You might have to work it in at first, but once it's in, it never has to come out. Okay. So how do you get this? Well, there's a number of ways. You can help support the channel, you can DM me on Instagram, and I'll work something out with you. I'll print this part out for you and I'll send it out. 
Just keep in mind it takes me four hours on my high-speed printer to print this out. But I'm going to release this part on Thingiverse. So this is a gift from me to the community, because I think everyone should have this part, especially if you've been experiencing problems with the Carbon Star in this way. You shouldn't have to use a shower cap or tape the back cap on it, especially since you spent all your hard-earned money on it, right? It's kind of frustrating. So that is my gift to the community. Let me know how it works out for you. Um, keep in mind that I designed this uh, for my K1 printer. So depending on what type of printer you have, it might not print out exactly the way I have it here. That being said, I can always print one for you and then I'll send one out to you. All right, guys. Well, I guess that's it for this one and we'll see you in the next. Peace.